This is Barrels and Barrels, a bourbon and baseball podcast. Well, hey, everybody, it is Brandon here from Barrels and Barrels, and we are here halfway through the weekend of the NLCS and the ALCS, both series uh, a little lopsided after the first three or four games, and I wanted to do a quick recap of what's been going on and a quick look forward at what you can expect in each series as we turn the page to Sunday. Saturday saw both teams leading the series also get their win and it does mean that the Astros now have a 3-0 series lead, uh, taking a commanding lead over the New York Yankees. Now, Game 3, of course, went to the Astros. It went 5 to nothing. Uh, a couple of miscues out in the outfield early in the game, and then a home run by McCormick. Uh, as the Yankees had their stud out on the mound, out there they had... Um, Garrett Cole, who you were hoping to steal Game 3 with to get that momentum back in. It just didn't happen as the Astros, again, take Game 3 by a score of 5 to nothing. Now, the crazy part of all of this is Christian, uh, Christian Javier, uh, with his Major League Playoff debut, it's his first career playoff game, comes out and he pitched very well. Five-plus innings, I think it was five and a third. He had five strikeouts. He's pitched in New York Versus the Yankees twice this year. He's giving up a total one hit. The Yankees were only able to muster up three hits in that game alone. Two of them coming in the ninth inning before they could uh, get anybody going. And by that point, they were down 5 nothing, And they go on to lose. Now, this series is something to behold here because the Astros... Their big guys really haven't even showed up. Not only in the series, really in the playoffs. Jose Altuve... Altuve got his first hit of the entire playoffs in this game. They are now six games in. The Astros have yet to lose a game. They are 6-0. and They won the first series versus the Mariners 3 to nothing, and they now lead again, as I mentioned, 3-0 in this series in the ALCS. Coming into tonight, uh, Altuve had not had a hit in the entire playoffs. He's currently 1-for-28 overall in the entire playoffs with 10 strikeouts the ALCS he's only one for 12 with four K's and that is what is very scary if you're a Yankees fan or any other team uh, looking at the Phillies or the Padres down the road in the World Series thinking that the Astros are most likely going to win this series is that their best players have yet to play like their best players Jordan Alvarez since hitting that home run in game two versus the Mariners he is 1 for 10 just in the ALCS, but he's 1 for 17 since that home run uh, with eight strikeouts. So he has not been the player that the Astros were hoping to have. And Trey Mancini, he hasn't seen a whole lot of time in the playoffs. This is his playoff debut. He's never made it, being that he's with the Orioles the last several years. He's 0 for 8 with one walk and three strikeouts. So those are three big bats for the Astros that really haven't stepped up yet and really done anything, and the Astros have yet to lose a game. Their pitching has been tremendous, and the Yankees' hitting has just not shown up here in the ALCS. One thing of note, there has been one team to ever come back out of 39 times when a team leads with a 3-0 series. They are 38-1. and and that is in the MLB. Well, it has been done a couple of times in sports history, four times in the NHL, one time in the MLB, uh, and that happened back in 2004. As many of you baseball fans know, the Red Sox came back down 3 to nothing on the Yankees. So the Yankees fans, you've got hope, but uh, it's not likely. Right now, currently, FanDuel has the Astros as a minus 2,200 favorite to win the series, meaning you would have to put down $2,200 in order to win $100 back. Uh, in turn, the Yankees are so big of an underdog, they are plus 1,700, meaning $100 would win you $1,700 plus your $100 back. The Astros pitching, I think, has been the story of the series, uh, as well as the bats for the Yankees. The Yankees are hitting 128. That is their team batting average in the first three games of this series, and Aaron Judge is probably the biggest disappointment, hitting .083. He's not even hitting 100. Anthony Rizzo's only hitting hit on one, 111, excuse me, 
and Giancarlo Stanton, I believe, sitting at 250, and he had the big hit uh, versus Javier uh, earlier in the game to get the Yankees their one threat, really, with him on the mound. It's been an Astros-dominated series. The Astros are the better team. It has shown up that way. Uh, it's what it looked like was going to happen, and it's what going to likely happen in Game 4, or if not Game 5, because as we look to Game 4, which will be Sunday, first pitch is at 7.07. That'll be on TBS. We've got Lance McCullers, who was pushed back a day because of an elbow injury uh, from the celebration of beating the Guardians in uh, Game... Or, excuse me, beating the Mariners in Game 3. Uh, he has pitched very well in his one outing. He went six innings in his one start. That was that 18-inning game versus the Mariners back on uh, the 20th, so the 15th um, in the uh, ALDS. He went six innings, shut out baseball, seven strikeouts and two walks. Now he'll be facing Nestor Cortez, who had a pretty good game against the Guardians to hold them down in game what ended up being game five. Uh, right before Game 1 in the ALCS. Ten innings so far in the postseason. Again, this is his first first year in the postseason. He's got 2.7 ERA, so not bad. Uh, but he's going against a very tough Astros team who feasts off a of left-handing pitching. And he's going against a guy who has a lot of career experience in the playoffs. Lance McCullers in his career uh, he started 10 games in the playoffs. He's pitched in 17. Think about how many years the Astros have been in the playoffs. He has pitched 63 innings in the entire playoff career with 69 strikeouts. So more than a strikeout an inning. His whip is right around one. He's got a 2-2 two and two record, but his lifetime playoff ERA is 2.56. So he's pretty dominant. Uh, and so far, um, he's just been fantastic. He didn't pitch a whole... Th- whole lot this year because he came back from a arm injury which he suffered last year in the playoffs versus the White Sox but he's got a 2.27 ERA in the regular season this year he has faced the Astro or he has faced the Yankees in the playoffs once um, and that was actually twice but uh, he started once versus the Yankees and that was in 2017 he pitched 10 innings in that series uh, where the Astros ultimately beat the Yankees and then ended up going on into win the World Series uh, and Judge uh, had that one hit, which was a home run uh, against him back in 2017. Now, Nestor Cortez this year uh, versus Houston, he did have a nose decision back in June, on uh, June 26, with five innings pitched. So my lean in this one would be the Astros. They are currently on FanDuel as the underdog here going into Game 4, listed as a plus-104 underdog. The Yankees are a minus-122 favorite. Um, my thoughts... I think that the Astros are going to come away with a sweep here. Sorry, Yankees fans. It just doesn't look like your team has anything left in the tank. Uh, They had to struggle to win that series versus the Guardians. Their offense just hasn't been clicking. Uh, They don't have their their full bevy of talent. Donaldson hasn't played well. Uh, Really, you haven't had much from Gleyber Torres, LeMay, who's been hurt, and uh, outside of Harrison Bader with a couple of home runs earlier in the postseason. He hasn't done much, and you didn't even look that impressive against the Guardians. Um, And I don't know what kind of pitching you're going to have from here on out. So I expect the Astros to get the sweep here. Um, And if not, they will have Game 5 on Monday, which will also be in New York. And that game is at 4.07 on TBS. Uh, You would assume that if the Yankees make it there, they're probably going to have Severino on short rest, if not Jamison Tyone. Uh, But you'd be going against Justin Verlander. Uh, with the Astros. So it's pretty much a nail in the coffin that one of these next two games are going to the Astros. On the other side, in the NLCS, boy, this has been a funner series to watch regarding any offense. The Phillies and the Padres, they have some young studs out there, both on both sides of the uh, diamond. The pitching has been pretty good too when you look at it on the front of the line. But as you've gotten into the middle games here, Not as much, and that was pretty apparent here uh, in Game 4, where the Phillies and the Padres both combined for 13 pitchers used. 
The Phillies had seven pitchers used in that game, and the Padres uh, threw Sean Manaya, who hadn't pitched since October 4th. So we're going on two and a half weeks since he threw baseball competitively. Now that series is up 3-1. to one. Now for Padres fans, here is some silver lining. There has been 14 comebacks from being down 3-1 to one in a series. And out of those 14, 12 of those teams went on to win the World Series. Six of them actually happened in the World Series. The last time that happened, of course, was the Chicago Cups in 2016 versus the Indians at the time. But it also happened in 2020 in the NLCS as the Dodgers overtook the Braves down 3-1 to one to go on, and they ended up winning the World Series as well. Now, this has happened multiple times in the 2000s, so there is a chance. Padres, you're not down and out, but the odds do not look great uh, as there's a very good chance the Phillies will wrap this up in one of the next three games. And FanDuel has the Phillies as a minus 750 favorite to win the series. The Padres are plus 650. So if you do have faith that the Padres still could come back and you're in an area that you can gamble, you throw a couple dollars on the uh, Padres to come back, you'll be getting $6.50 for every dollar that you bet. Now, the big deal here in the playoffs has been the Phillies' offense. They came to play. Their defense still has looked shaky, but their offense has been enough to overcome that. In Game 3, Gene Segura, uh, some mental mistakes, but he came up with the big hit when they needed it to bring them back for the win. And then in Game 4 here, the Phillies' offense putting up 10 runs. There's been a bevy of Phillies hitting home runs, Man, and their studs have come to play. And that's what you haven't seen with the Yankees. And really, for the most part, the Padres, their better players and their better hitters have not showed up uh, in this series. The Phillies have. Kyle Schwarber leading everybody in that. And I would assume that he'd be the front runner for the NLCS MVP uh, if this series does end on Sunday. Schwarber right now in this series is batting 429 uh, with an OPS. This is his OPS. This is not. This is slugging plus his on base. His on base is over 500. He's got an OPS of 1600. Even uh, the next best out there is Brandon Drury, who is the one guy on the Padres who has really come to shine in this series. He's got five RBIs. He's been the best hitter for the Padres in this series. Uh, and Manny Machado has hit. He's just not driving in many runs. He's got two home runs, and those are the only two runs he's driven in. And Juan Soto did get his first home run here on Saturday, but uh, he hasn't done enough to help the Padres. So if the Padres are to come back, they're going to need those two guys to really step up and drive in some runs and be the offensive force that they were brought on to be. You need Josh Bell to step up, and you just need that those best your best hitters to play their best in the biggest stage, and that's just showed up for the, the Phillies. Reese Hoskins, he's only got three hits in the NLCS. All three are long balls. Bryce Harper, six for 16. He's got a bomb, a couple of doubles. Boy, is he jacked up. And the crazy thing about Bryce Harper, he hasn't walked yet in this series, but he has yet to strike out in four games, which is very important as well. He's putting the ball in play. He's forcing the defense to make plays and get him out, and they're just not being able to do that. Uh, overall, the Phillies... The ERA that they have, they're pitching okay. I mean, 3.86 is a good ERA, but it's not anything close to what the Astros have done. It's just the Padres pitching has not been up to par. 5.56 ERA. While the Phillies are slugging in that OPS for the Phillies as a team is 7.81, the Padres is only 6.03. So there's not as much offense coming from the Padres. And as I mentioned, you're going to need your big boppers. You're going to need Soto. You're going to need... Manny Machado. Drury has stepped up, but Josh Bell hasn't done much. You're not getting a whole lot of production out of either of your middle infielders uh, outside of Drury here or there. And he's not always going to be your middle infielder. Uh, Profar uh, went off on, I think it was game three, getting kicked out. Um, you're just not getting production up and down the lineup, and you were getting saved with the back end of the lineup earlier on in the postseason. Now, Game 5, it is going to be a tough pitching matchup, and this is both what these teams needed because after using all of their bullpen, I mean, the Phillies had six guys come out of their pen. Both pitchers were bounced in the first inning. Combined in Game 4, 
the two starting pitchers for the Phillies and the Padres combined got a total of two outs and faced 10 total batters. So both bullpens are going to be taxed going into game five here. That first pitch is actually Sunday, uh, October 23rd. So that'll be today as I record this in that game. I believe is 2 o'clock or 2.37 in the afternoon Eastern time. So it's going to be an early game. Uh, I know Brad Hand probably not going to be available. Uh, you're going to have to worry about the potential that uh, David Robertson, yeah, he looked good tonight, but is he going to be able to pitch on short rest after dealing with an injury that kept him out on of the NLDS? So uh, it's going to be interesting. Which starter goes the deepest is probably going to have the best outcome in this one. And those starters, you Darvish and Zach Wheeler, it's a rematch of game one. Um, of course, Darvish pitched very well, but Zach Wheeler pitched better. Zach Wheeler went seven innings, no runs, one hit with eight strikeouts. You pitched very well with seven innings as well. However, he did have the two blemishes with solo home runs to Harper and then Schwarber, that Schwarber bomb, which was insane, uh, nearly 500 feet. And he had another one out there tonight that looked just as far, but uh, was only at 429. Now, Wheeler, the one thing you can point at is his inexperience in the playoffs. He's only pitched in the playoffs this year in his career. He's had a long career. He played with the Mets, but he was always hurt when the Mets were in the playoffs. He's pitched 19 innings here so far this postseason. He's looked very good, a 1.4 ERA, and I don't expect anything different here going into Game 5. Hughes looked great as well with a 2.84 ERA, and he probably was the best pitcher in the month of September in the National League, if not the entire league, is self 5-1 and one with 1.85 ERA. So this is going to be a good pitching matchup. You're going to likely see uh, low run scoring, and I think each manager, especially on the Phillies, are going to be a little easier to let their starter go longer. Uh, I don't know what Bud Black's going to do uh, if we get into the middle of the game and use struggling because it's his last match, but uh, and they're down to their fighting chance. But uh, I, I would expect both starters to go deep into this game. Now, the Padres are the underdog in this matchup, uh, plus 120. And the Phillies are the favorite at minus 142. All of these gambling odds are coming from FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, so those are where I normally get my numbers from. You can check, shop around. If you've got ideas on a team that you want a better odds on, maybe go check out DraftKings or Barstool Sportsbook, you can always find better lines uh, by shopping around. Game six, if necessary, will also be played Monday. That game would be back in San Diego, uh, so no rest, turnaround, travel day. Um, my guess, it's Nola versus Snell in game six if we make it to that point, but I don't think we're going to make it to that point. I think that the Phillies are going to wrap it up in game five at home in front of their crowd. Uh, the crowd has been electric, and it's just going to be an incredible atmosphere out there. So that's what I expect here out of these two series. I think that by Monday we're going to have that World Series matchup of the Astros and the Phillies, uh, which is likely going to be a very tilted uh, towards the Astros' favored World Series if we get to that point. But that's why we play the game. That's why we play the series Neither of these teams have clinched yet. We'll see if that happens on Sunday. And of course, I am here by myself recording this, but Michael, uh, excuse me, myself, Michael, and Kyle will be back with another rendition. I believe it will be episode six of the Barrels and Barrels podcast. You can find this on YouTube. Maybe we'll get this up on Spotify as well. Uh, but for now, I'm Brandon Spinner. Thanks for watching. You can always follow us on Instagram, Barrels N Barrels Pod. Again, that is at Barrels, the letter N, Barrels Pod. We're on Twitter, Barrels and Barrels. Facebook, Barrels and Barrels Pod is where you can find us here on YouTube, as well as wherever you stream your podcasts. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Pods, as well as iHeart. And if you're looking for me on Instagram, uh, search at whiskey underscore weather. Thanks for listening. Thanks for joining me here on YouTube. Have a great rest of your weekend, and uh, we'll see who comes out on top.